The transition to electrification and automobiles is exciting, but maybe you're not quite ready to make the jump. Maybe you make a lot of long road trips, potentially you do a lot of towing, or maybe you just want to wait and see how the technology shakes out. Fortunately, you can dip your toe into the world of electrification with one of these, a plug-in hybrid. Today, we're going to talk about plug-in hybrids, or as they're also known as PHEVs. Now, a traditional hybrid like the original Prius, it gets energy back to the battery via regenerative braking or the gas motor. With a plug-in hybrid, you can also get energy back to the battery in those ways, but more importantly, it also gets its energy from well, you guessed it, plugging it in. Regular hybrids are known to have increased efficiency with miles per gallon numbers above 40 in some instances. While Honda's Insight was likely the first mass market hybrid in the US, the Toyota Prius has become synonymous with the vehicle type. A plug-in hybrid can also achieve those numbers, but its real advantage is its ability to drive long distances in EV mode. According to the Department of Transportation, the average person drives 37 miles a day. Now, this Ford Escape plug-in hybrid that I'm driving right now, it has an EV-only, EPA-estimated range of 37 miles, which, well, that's actually quite convenient. The Toyota RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrid has an EPA-estimated EV-only range of 42 miles. The Hyundai Tucson, with its plug-in hybrid, it has a range of 33 miles. For most owners of plug-in hybrids, they might never dip into the gas tank on an average day of driving. And if they do, it's only for a few miles. Regardless of where you live, it's typically less expensive to power a vehicle via electrons than gasoline. That is, if you charge overnight, which is when most plug-in hybrids are sitting idle in a driveway or garage. Of course, there are a lot of variables that determine how much of a savings you will get while operating a plug-in hybrid. For instance, how much money you pay for electricity and whether or not you're on a tiered program with your utility company. For instance, maybe you pay more during the day than you do at night. And of course, there always is the cost of gasoline in your area. That makes a huge difference in how much money you're going to save driving a plug-in hybrid. But that's just the cost savings of owning a PHEV. Let's get down to the nuts and bolts of how these vehicles work and how they integrate into the lives of their owners. At its core, a plug-in hybrid is powered by both a gas engine and an electric motor. The gas engine is powered by a gas tank, while the electric motors are powered by a battery pack. Typically, a plug-in hybrid is powered in one of three ways. One way is that the gas engine and the electric motor are working together in order to propel the vehicle. Another way is, that, well, you're out of electricity, you're out of juice in the battery, and you're only being powered by the gas engine. And finally, there is the electric motor only way. You're only being powered by the battery, and this is, of course, that EV only range, that EV only mode that we talked about earlier. Because its selling point is extended electric only range over that of a regular non-plug-in hybrid, a plug-in hybrid has a larger battery pack. For example, the pack in this Ford Explorer is 10.7 kilowatt hours. For context, the new Prius Prime plug-in hybrid has a battery pack capacity of 8.8 .8 kilowatt hours, while the regular Prius hybrids pack is only 0.75 kilowatt hours. If this were a pure electric vehicle, its battery pack would be much larger. For example, this Kia EV9 has a battery pack capacity of 99.8 kilowatt hours, and this Hyundai Kona Electric, its pack is 64 kilowatt hours. Regular hybrids like the Toyota Prius, they don't need a large pack. In fact, the Prius has a paltry 0.75 kilowatt hour capacity pack because it doesn't need anything larger. Its main energy comes from regenerative braking and from the engine, unlike a plug-in hybrid or an EV, where most of that power is coming from actually plugging it in. But it's that charging that makes all the difference with a plug-in hybrid. Yes, a plug-in hybrid can get energy from regenerative braking and from the gas motor, but really its main source of energy is from this, the J1772 plug. 
Officially, it's the SAE standard SAE J1772. You'll hear it called the level two plug, the J plug, or type one plug. What's important is that this is how you get electricity into your plug-in hybrid. Most plug-in hybrids ship with this, a J1772 cable. Now, it'll allow you to plug it into your 120 volt outlet at home and plug it into your vehicle. And it will charge your vehicle, typically overnight, albeit rather slowly. We call this level one charging. Like EVs, charging a plug-in hybrid while it sits in your driveway overnight is the best course of action. So even if it says it'll take eight hours to charge your vehicle, that's fine because you're asleep. The next morning you'll wake up with a full battery and you and your vehicle are ready for the day. If you're really ambitious about speeding up the charging of a plug-in hybrid, you can buy a level two charging station, also known as a wall box, or a level two cable. Now with the charging station, you, there are two options. You can either have an electrician install the station directly into your garage or maybe outside in the driveway, or you can have them install a 240 volt NEMA 1450 outlet. Now, if you have a dryer in your house, you've probably seen this outlet it's about this big. Now with that, you can buy a charging station that you can just plug into that, or you can buy the charging cable that you can also just plug into that and radically speed up the charging of a plug-in hybrid. Now your plug-in hybrid will charge in a few hours instead of overnight. That's at home. Out in the world, well, for PHEVs, things get a bit tricky. Uh, the majority of plug-in hybrids have the J1772 port on them, which is great if you find yourself a level two charger while you're driving around. Where things get weird is the rise of EVs and DC fast charging. You've probably heard about all the new charging stations being installed for the increased amount of EVs on the road. The thing is, for most plug-in hybrids, those charging stations are a no-go. These DC fast chargers, they support part of the J1772, but with an additional element. This is a J1772 CCS combo coupler. Now, it's CCS for short, and what it has is these extra elements, these two little ports right here. And what those uh, allow is for DC fast charging up to 350 kilowatts. Now that sounds great if you have a plug-in hybrid, but first of all, no plug-in hybrids support DC fast charging up to 350 kilowatts, and a majority of them, well, this plug won't fit, which is sort of unfortunate. There are very few plug-in hybrids that support CCS. One of them is the Range Rover plug-in hybrid. It does support CCS. It can charge it up to 50 kilowatts, but that vehicle is a unicorn in the world of plug-in hybrids. It's well, it's a luxurious, comfortable unicorn. What's nice is that if your plug-in hybrid's battery is depleted, well, it's not a big deal. You can just run on gas. You don't need to pull over and charge. You can just wait till you get home or to your destination. So how does a gas engine and an electric motor work together so you can drive to the store, pick up the kids, or visit a friend? Well, I'm glad you asked. Plug-in hybrids typically work in one of two ways. There's the parallel system. The wheels are powered by either the gas engine or electric motor via mechanical coupling, or maybe the gas engine runs one set of tires while the electric motor runs the other. That's how most plug-in hybrids work, including this Ford Escape that I'm driving right now. But there is another one, and that is the series plug-in hybrid. In that instance, the electric motor is always running the wheels and the gas engine, it actually acts as a generator for the battery. The electric BMW i3, there was a version of that vehicle that used a motorcycle engine as a generator. Meanwhile, the upcoming Ram 1500 Ram Charger Hybrid has essentially the same setup, except there is a V6 under the hood to charge the battery. That Ram pickup is expected to have an EV only range of 145 miles. So in your average day, most of the time while you're driving that pickup, you're not going to be using the gas engine. But when you decide you want to tow something or you want to travel a long distance, that V6 will kick in to charge the battery for you. For pickup fans, you get all the benefits and cost savings of driving electricity, which will be a majority of the time. But when you need to do big, tough truck things like towing and hauling, you have that gas engine to back you up, which is really a benefit of all plug-in hybrids. 
For those still on the fence about EVs, not quite ready to pull the trigger, but you want to reduce the amount of gasoline you burn in your daily life, there are PHEVs. They have the safety net of an established gasoline infrastructure while allowing you to do most of your daily driving under electric power. For more videos about sustainability, plug-in hybrids, and EVs, be sure to subscribe to SAE International's YouTube channel.